Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Narek Rome, Vice President of Government Affairs and Arts Education of Americans for the Arts. Americans for the Arts has worked for more than 50 years to ensure that every American has access to the transformative power of the arts. Narek has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Narek, for joining us today. Good to be here. So, Narek, we have a lot of issues to confront in this country. We are dealing with energy policy. We're dealing with the Affordable Care Act and the, the constant battles over Benghazi and, and other issues of the day. Why are arts important to America? There certainly and always have been enormous challenges that our uh, country has faced and even from the beginning of our country, the arts have been present at that moment. Uh, you think about the Star Spangled Banner as the song that helped unite the country. That was uh, the lyrics, the music, uh, the, the, the sort of the way that it helped to build uh, a resolute nation. That was the arts right there. And so even with the issues that you just mentioned, in every one of them there's issues there uh, that relate to the arts. Um, Americans for the Arts is involved in the arts in the military. We're involved in arts and communities and, and trying to build local economies and, uh, and, and the way that that connects to jobs. And uh, there are a number of other issues as well that, uh, that both the administration and Congress grapple with. And uh, we try to provide a uh, unanimous and, and sort of a consensus message on, in each of those policy areas on how the arts can be a part of the solution. One of the ways that um, we try to promote the arts, uh, both with the administration and Congress, is the value that it, that it has within our nation's public diplomacy efforts uh, abroad. Uh, the State Department has a public diplomacy program. It includes everything from uh, sports uh, and athletes of national renown to uh, television and radio programs and then also includes cultural exchange programs where artists are uh, from America go abroad and share some of the, the work that they do and we also bring, uh, the State Department brings uh, groups from abroad and their particular uh, discipline and performances around the country and that entire exchange I think is, speaks to the expression that allows us to get uh, a sense of what America is about around the world in the same way uh, that the multiculturalism that we have here can be uh, experienced around the country um, also from visiting uh, delegations. The, the arts are having a, a major impact on our economy and our, uh, and our business environment. And then you start to take a look at, at the arts and entertainment. Yep. Um, theatrical arts, the, the ability of script writers to create scripts that get, then, get, then gets translated into a Hollywood movie or even into uh, an adventure park experience that Disney offers. The arts are really embedded in, in the diverse forms of, uh, that America takes. Yeah. Our, the, our workforce now more than ever is becoming, uh, I think, a, a more understanding and uh, advancing through a creative economy and the kind of economy that where things that can be produced here from uh, the innovation processes that some of our you know, corporate leaders are pursuing, the ones, the companies that you just mentioned, but also for individuals that are seeking to develop skills in a way where uh, the work that they do is something that they can put a career together around and that it wouldn't be a career that, would, um, that might be exported to another country at some point. Uh, certainly it's a, it's a changing economy and I think that creativity and the skills that help uh, the production and development of creative product is uh, an important part of our future workforce. And to the degree that the arts, uh, either in the formal sense or any of the related arts, both in the for-profit, non-profit, um, even including some of the, the design elements in video gaming, uh, which is then one step removed from some of the engineering and software development that uh, is certainly booming. Uh, and, and mobile devices and the apps that go with them. All of those uh, in some way have a connection to uh, training in the visual arts, uh, movement and dance, uh, and obviously then some other ways of um, uh, drama and, and theater and, and of course music. So are you suggesting that part of our unique competitive advantage 
that we need to continue to cultivate. And part of the uh, power that America exercises in the world is, is actually connected to the creativity that attaches to art. Yeah, very mu that's very much so what I believe. And uh, one of the ways that we try to, uh, I guess, advance that in terms of our uh, national understanding is we have some research called the Creative Industries. And we've tried to identify about 650 uh, particular occupations within uh, the thousands that exist. And within those 650 are, you know, there'd be a videographer, there would be uh, a um, needlepoint maker, there would be someone who uh, makes musical instruments, uh, and up and down the line for all the kinds of skills uh, and all the kinds of occupations that exist. It helps us to identify what the creative industries look like, and we can then map that around the country and it doesn't, wouldn't surprise anyone to know that you know Silicon Valley has a uh, above average amount of creative industry types, uh, and the same way that any of the um, I guess um, cities that uh, have industries that rely on innovation and creativity. But what's really interesting is even outside of those established cities and throughout rural America, there are creative types in all of those places. They're everywhere. The question then becomes, how can the uh, jobs of the future, where it takes certainly a couple generations to move from uh, an industrial economy to something that uh, a workforce that relies more on um, the, the internal uh, creation of uh, creative products, how can that be s supported around the country? And so some of those policies um, are what we're trying to develop right now. Some of them rely on economic development policies. Some of them are uh, creativity, place-based uh, kinds of approaches. How do you feel about the fact that education programs, um, high schools, uh, middle schools, elementary schools, and certainly universities are moving away from art programs and from including art programs, basically uh, very often uh, arguing that uh, due to budgetary constraints, we have to focus on, quote, more important subjects. Mm -hmm. um, the move away from the liberal arts, that might include exposure to art and culture uh, in the curriculum. Um, how do you feel about that for the future of our country? Well, it's very alarming. Uh, in the K through 12 education system, there is enormous reporting and annual concern through the budget process and at school district levels that the arts are uh, continue to be challenged, that arts, music, dance, drama teachers uh, continually are on uh, the losing side of some of the budget fights. It's a process that follows uh, typically the, um, the, ec the economic uh, impact in the national economy. Uh, but in terms of arts education, it is important, uh, and, and we try to train uh, not just those who are in the who are practitioners, but also uh, parents, for example, so that they understand what to ask for, what to ask, how to monitor arts education uh, at their school level or in their school district, and that's important because there's not very much reporting or formal research or data provided at the school district level on how arts education is being provided. So talk about some of the programs that American for the Arts uh, has and, and how you advance your mission. Sure, well we have, uh, uh, we've been for over 50 years working to advance the arts and arts education in communities around the country. Uh, we have three strategies. We try and build leadership, we try and generate resources and policies, and we try and advance individuals and organizations to support and appreciate uh, the arts and arts education. And uh, I work in the government affairs side of things, and so we do uh, everything from the uh, formal lobbying, uh, which is quite prominent in Washington, D.C., uh, advocacy, decision-maker education. Uh, we have uh, an action fund as well and a connected PAC, and we try and provide a full slate of a portfolio of both uh, policy approaches and also uh, tactics to try and build, uh, communicate to um, the White House, the administration, and also Congress. So 
Let's talk uh, first about your lobbying uh, activities. What type of programs are you, or what kind of policies are you advocating for sure. in, in that area? Well, for a number of years, and not surprisingly, we try and uh, continue support for the National Endowment for the Arts. It is the leading cultural agency uh, for our, our country, and uh, it has over, for decades, been uh, a challenge to try and continue support for that. Uh, it has some. Um, it had some real challenges back in the 90s, right. and then uh, it has been on a very slow path back to re regaining the funding levels that it was uh, back in, in the 90s. And so, that's one of the issues. But then beyond that, we also we m talked about arts education, uh, trying to strengthen that at the U.S. Department of Education. There's a, uh, a number of economic development issues that we are tracking at the Department of Commerce. Uh, and um, then uh, public diplomacy. There's uh, for the nonprofit sector, but also for arts organizations, a number of tax issues that we care about. Also, they connect to artists uh, directly. And so that's our, the, the bulk of our uh, policy uh, platform from one year to the next. But then uh, individual uh, or independent issues come up. Uh, Musicians bringing instruments on planes uh, is an issue from time to time when uh, there is not, there has not been a uniform policy among all the airlines on what instruments can be brought on, right. what can be put in the overhead uh, compartment, and, and uh, you know, it, it, that actually is a federal issue because the Federal Aviation uh, Agency has jurisdiction there. In terms of, of your state activities, talk about those uh, yep. as well. Well, so uh, the state leadership is critical. Uh, every state has a state arts agency, uh, in part because uh, the National Endowment for the Arts, 40% of its budget actually goes out in a partnership uh, with those state agencies. And it's really important uh, that the advocacy to support those state agencies continues. Uh, and it, every state, as you might assume, has a different climate and political landscape for right. how that can be supported. Uh, we have a, a network of state leaders that we try to support uh, so that they can have the best tools to do their work at the state level. Uh, and then also on the state, they have a whole portfolio of issues as well, tax issues. They have even uh, more complicated landscape sometimes because sales tax, uh, some of the fees that states consider on license plates, all of those could be and, and sometimes are revenue sources for the arts for that particular state. And then uh, other programs? So we also uh, are pursuing arts education. It is incredibly complicated when you try and do it. Uh, when there's one Congress to, to lobby, right. that's sometimes straightforward. But then you have 50 states all experimenting with their education systems. And so uh, there, the issues and the education sector that uh, is out there uh, is looking at after school programs, charter schools, uh, new ways of assessing. Uh, various subjects. Then you have uh, teacher uh, pay and uh, uh, teacher effectiveness issues. There's a wide scope of the general policy issues that the arts uh, and arts education practitioners are, are need to be a part of, and we try and engage with parents and all the different stakeholders, school leaders, uh, on how the arts can be a part of that conversation. Do you get involved in the various uh, changes to the to the arts field of play? We're seeing a yep. massive shift, uh, along with the demographic shift in terms of attendance to organizations like operas, symphonies, the classic arts, so-called, um, and there is a grassroots shift that that takes arts out of institutional settings and puts those into communities. How is yeah. American for the Arts dealing with those kinds of tectonic changes? It, it, you're absolutely right. There is that kind of change is taking place. It's even uh, spurred on, I think, because of some of the the, the uh, digital advancement right. uh, of uh, uh, that experience as well. So Americans for the Arts, though, uh, we represent the core of our membership. While we represent uh, all kinds of uh, arts-related individuals and organizations. The core of our membership are the local arts agencies. Uh, the, there's about 5,000 of them around the country. Sometimes they're uh, at the county level. They can be part of the municipal government, or they can just be a nonprofit that serves the community. That's, uh, at the city level, at the state level. Yep. Uh, and and the, the kinds of changes that are taking place uh, for both 
uh, arts involvement at, at the grassroots grassroots level that you mentioned. Local arts agencies and those kind and those serving those communities are seeing it very directly, uh, and we try and provide them with a with um, both a network that they can work within, uh, tools and research that help capture that kind of change that's taking place so that they can plan uh, both their programming, but they can also understand how to uh, inform their decision makers, their funders, uh, both in the public sector and in the private sector, how these changes are taking place and um, how to uh, be flexible, but also responsive to the needs of their communities. How do you uh, deal with the feedback loop? How do you ensure that you understand what those needs of those communities are? Well, uh, in a couple ways. Uh, we have an annual conference, which certainly brings um, representatives and leaders from uh, the 50 states together every year. We do that, and those are the community leaders in the arts. Then we also have a separate conference that is about arts marketing. And that is about how to, how to build audiences. And the, the folks that run those programs are incredibly responsive to, that's marketing. Uh, and they need, they're on the, the very uh, cutting edge of the nonprofit and the for-profit sense of how are we increasing revenue? How are we able to sustain the kind of programming that we want to do? And so uh, between those two conferences and then also uh, our, we have a number of councils representing public art, arts education, emerging leaders, uh, you know, young uh, graduates in both who, who are looking uh, to, to have a career in arts administration. Uh, those are all the different ways that we try and uh, provide leadership in all these different disciplines and, and career uh, paths. So you're helping uh, leaders to grapple with some of the the, the pressing business problems of driving contributed revenue or in a performing arts sense, butts and seats yep. or museum attendance or um, how do you uh, gain adoption uh, for arts and schools? You're helping to grapple with those very practical problems. That's right. And, and the thing that's a little unusual is uh, we try and convene the, the, um, the discussions so that they can happen. The nonprofit arts may not su surprisingly uh, has uh, limited resources. Uh, the ability to convene people uh, allows for uh, a thought process, allows for uh, some you know long-term planning, and to share best practices in an area in a field that it has the pressures of uh, the entertainment industry uh, weighing on it. Uh, certainly, the creative industries, as I mentioned, uh, is. Um, many of the artists that we try to support are both finding a way uh, and a livelihood through selling their product and also uh, furthering their discipline. In terms of the future for American for the Arts, uh, are there any particular initiatives that you'd like to particularly highlight? Uh, every five years we have a study called the Arts and Economic Prosperity Study. And it's uh, done in partnership with 180 communities uh, around the country state, county, and local, and it, uh, it, it measures the impact of the nonprofit arts on that community. Right. And the methodology allows us to say, uh, here's how a dollar spent by an audience member will resonate in that community, and this is in addition to the ticket price for a performance. And so what we have, and what, we, what I use quite often on Capitol Hill, is our AEP4 study. So this is the fourth one. We've done them for 20 years. Uh, and it shows in those communities how uh, many jobs are supported, the kind of economic impact that a community may have just from the nonprofit arts. Uh, and the, that continues to be one of the, str one of the strongest uh, and most effective arguments that we have with policymakers. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, just the um, ju just the support for the art itself is not enough. You have to make the case that there's a uh, financial and economic value to it as well. And so this study allows us to do that, and we will be continuing to do that. But what is important is that even without those 180 communities, what has been also helpful is the partnerships that we have with other public sector uh, organizations, such as the U.S. Conference of Mayors, has been a uh, longtime partner 
with Americans for the Arts, but also in this particular study, because mayors can see very immediately in their cities how the arts can bring uh, prosperity, how it can bring a civic and, and uh, a, a enormous health to their community. And so there's other policymakers, uh, the county level, uh, that also have the same values. And we try hard to make sure that the, the kind of data that we can generate can be shared among these policy leaders. And at some point, those policy leaders, if, if the message isn't getting to Washington today, sometimes these policy leaders go to Washington themselves. And Eric Rome, thank you so much uh, for explaining the work of American for the Arts. I think that the organization certainly has its work cut out for, uh, for it and with the support of people who treasure the arts and benefit from the arts, you will invariably be successful. It's a long haul, but anything worth doing is worth doing right. Thank you, Narek, and thank you for your insights. Thank you, Mark. Thanks.